a lot of kids just move straight here when they're 18 and they're in that straight ahead mentality. You know, they haven't yeah. really experienced anything to learn like how to be a real working musician. I was talking to this great bass player, Desiron Douglas. Um, he plays like Lewis Hayes and stuff. He yeah. was telling me like the first thing about New York is you have to learn how to survive and then you focus on the music. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> other musicians and actually creating your own band a part of getting in the scene okay so when I first came out here I was noticing when I was going to jam sessions that even if I got a gig you paid like $30 or 40 you know nothing crazy so yeah and then I was trying to play with certain people and you know they want to play with the guys who have big names and stuff so I was like let me just create my own band that has a similar improvisation to what I like yeah and um, that's how that formed and Sean Whalen was a inspiration to me growing up like, I used to check out his stuff with Tim and like uh, yeah. Carlock Adam Rogers and I asked him to join my band, and he was down, and then from the first kid, he loved it. Really? So, yeah. yeah. So where did you meet him? Did, we, did you just meet him on 55. a gig? And 55? Yeah, yeah. yeah. On a gig? Uh, no, just I would stalk his fan yeah i loved his group so much and you just said are you up for coming and doing yeah. something and he was like yeah and we it. would trade music and stuff he's a very nice guy so yeah yeah because i think a lot of people like move to new cities and don't understand like or know how to get into like, yeah you know into the scene well, and gigging the main thing well i learned this with ramsey when i was in florida is if you really want to play with somebody learn all their music and then hit them up and be like hey you know let's play that's the thing with wayne i was like I learned all his music, like I could sit in with the guy for four hours, I was like, let's play, you know, so. What, and you knew all his tunes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. still do, yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you moved to New York, did you know, know exactly which guys who you were I wanted to play with? Like, pretty yeah, much, who yeah. you wanted to play with, and obviously, did you move, moved to New York with a, you know, agenda become sort of like you know, yeah. a, a, ended up playing a, with the a best little guys. blind agenda because I really didn't know what New York pertains of. So yeah, you know, were I mean, you scared? What, what was what was the vibe like, Miami? I was scared, to, yeah, because yeah. I was like, I'm going to a new place and like all my people are down here. Um, so yeah, it was definitely an experience. And how long have you lived here now? Uh, two years. So two years, okay, so like two years, so you get to New York. Sold my car. So uh, like really? Yeah, so I came like, up with yeah. like five grand, yeah. Amazing, and that was just to see you through until you got some gigs. Exactly, your work or something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Cause like, I've, I've, you know, I've spoken to like loads of students and stuff and like there's so many people go through this, move into a big city and, you know, and then having to go out and get gigs and hustle and meet yeah. people. And like, what did you do? First like couple of weeks when you got here. Going to every do? session, spending, I mean, I was in Long Island, so I was spending like... Is that what the five grand went on? <laughs> Just going to gigs, First yeah. four months, yeah, literally. Yeah. And um, I found an awesome friend who was like, come crash on my couch for like seven months, and that was great. Um, yeah. So I was paying nothing, and I was like meeting all the people I needed to meet. Yeah. Um, eventually, I wanted to get out of that situation, so I got a day job, which most musicians I've taught to, that you know, they have to go through that. But yeah, of course, yeah. I made sure I found something that related to my music, so... Um, I worked at I worked at Smoke Jazz Club yeah. as a bartender slash yeah, waiter, yeah. so I'm always seeing good jazz every night. And yeah, so you got you got a job where you could like yeah. check out some great. Players. And I think if you have, I mean, if you're always worrying about money, that ruins with your mentality. So, and when that happens, the music is not 100 percent sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. So it's yeah. good to be financially stable. I was talking to this great bass player, Desiron Douglas. Um, he plays like Lewis Hayes and stuff. He yeah. was telling me like the first thing about New York is 
you have to learn how to survive and then you focus on the music. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah so, you get that first bit out of the way and you're pretty sort of much. like find your legs and then you're all right after that, yeah. A lot of kids just move straight here when they're 18 and they're in that straight ahead mentality. You know, they haven't yeah. really experienced anything to learn like how to be a real working musician because 80% of musicians really don't make their income from playing jazz, I think. Yeah, they typically get from teaching. Yeah, wedding gigs yeah, or yeah, what, yeah. whatever uh, Yeah, or corporate do. gigs and stuff so like that. So yeah. it's good to like know that bad, which it helped me out when I moved here because I was doing wedding stuff and I was doing blues and stuff. So I was able to do the bands that made money and stuff. So. Yeah. Were you doing any straight head gigs or not? Uh, rare. I mean, I did do them. Um, more so everyone associated me as this fusion guy. Um, I actually... If you ask anyone in Florida, they think I'm an upright player. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the same story kind of as Tim, and I moved here thinking that I was going to play upright and stuff. And yeah. Um, yeah, I just moved towards electric, and everyone know the thing about. And did you move? To, you made the move to electric when you moved to New York? Pretty much, as my upright broke, um, like the first two months, I brought a 200 euro check base and I left it at college, and someone knocked it over a chair. So that was the end of that, yeah. yeah. Which was a blessing because I don't have to carry it on the subway. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they've got, they've got these awesome wheels, haven't they? That put, they put them down. Have you seen yeah, but I've things? also seen like people like hit a crack and there oh, goes really? there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. the electric base is fine. You know? Yeah, yeah. So how did you meet Tim? I was a Chris Bodie fan, not like Chris personally, but I loved his band. Was James Genus, uh, Billy Childs, and Billy Kilston from Dave Holland's group. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. My ex-girlfriend at the time when I was in like high school, she bought me tickets to go see them. And um, I was like, hell yeah, I'm gonna see James Genus. And then I see this white guy, you know, Tim LaFay. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was Vanguard last month in January. I was just going like. and I play his bass and he's like when you move to New York like let me I told him I wanted to move to New York one day and yeah. he was like here's my number like let me help you out yeah and uh, we always kept in contact and I was playing with Kofi Burbridge from Tedeschi Trust yeah, yeah 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 in Florida with Randy so he would always like hit me up like so there was um, some sort of like connection there yeah yeah I, I also when we talked and he gave me his number there was another like I was in Florida for like maybe another three four years I didn't yeah. go straight ahead but um I moved up here and the first person I mean, he was like, you got to hook up with Wayne Kranz. Like, that's really, you know, play with him and you'll yeah. learn stuff. And yeah, which I did. Yeah. So not on the bandstand, but yeah. I studied with him a bit. And what did you do to do that? Did you like, literally just like call him and say, hey, oh, yeah. no, Tim gave me your number. Can no, I uh, Tim was actually playing with him one night and then Tim like walked me up to him and like introduced me. So, yeah. And then you went around his place. And yeah. Like, what kind of stuff did he show you? You know, the thing I loved about him is he was very free. He was just like. You know, I was a dude who just played grooves, so he was like, let's break up the repetition. Like, the repetition's already been done. Yeah. Just try to think of a motif with the bass line and, like, break that up with a metronome. So it allowed me to just practice. Like, when, after that, I just went home and I would just practice grooves with a metronome, but come up with lines in my head more so. And uh, that allowed freedom because I really can play whatever I want. So do you think you sort of, like, your bass playing's changed a lot since you... 100%. 100%. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And do you think that's sort of, like, exposure to guys like Wayne Krantz and what they told yeah. you to do? Yeah. Um, just you, can you show me some sort of, like, an example of what, of what you're talking <laughs> okay, about? Okay, if, like, we're playing in, like, C. Um, you know, a bass play might do that, but I could go yeah. to, like, the F sharp. So if I'm doing that, like, in the Wayne fashion... finding the root you know with yeah yeah, but yeah yeah with the freedom i'm always trying to listen to the soloist and go with where they're going and then when we relate and finally where the root is or the home base well brad you've been absolutely awesome guys Thank what you. we'll do is we'll make sure that on the show notes page yeah show notes page i'm jet lagged third time <laughs> i'm jet lagged um on the page in the show notes we'll link to instagram are you oh, on yeah. facebook and i'm on facebook too yeah brad instagram. adam miller brad adam miller yeah for both dude you're awesome thank, thank you, you awesome thanks yeah. for coming you're along. welcome